This is Vern Denham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. The following is being brought to you by Remote Transcription. Over a century ago, Henry Ward Beecher wrote that no person could become a full and complete person without the power of the Spirit of God, any more than a bud could become a blossom without the warmth of the sunlight. Human beings need God. There is a hunger of heart and a thirsting of spirit for God, and in the finding of the Father lies peace and joy. One of the greatest truths in the scriptures is also one of the great truths of the universe, that God is love, and love is desiring good for another. A man goes to the doctor for an examination. At the conclusion of it, the doctor says, listen, the best thing in the world for you would be if you'd stop drinking, stop smoking, quit going around all the nightclubs, stop running around with wild women, quit eating sweets and eliminate fattening foods. The man said, to be honest with you, doctor, I don't deserve the best. <laughs> he said, what's second best? God, in God's infinite love, wants not second best for his sons and daughters. God wants the best. God desires the greatest possible good in every human life. And to seek for the will and the wisdom of God is to seek the greatest good in the universe. What is man but an ingenious assemblage of portable plumbing? This is one philosopher's definition. The author Virgil Kraft once wrote, Human beings are either strutting absurdities in a cosmic sideshow, or they are the sons of God. But the weight of human history and the highest philosophic and spiritual thought resolve resoundingly in the conclusion that humankind are children of the Most High God who is both father and friend. The fatherhood of God is not a solitary truth. Its corollary principle is the brotherhood of man, a corollary both logically inexorable and spiritually inescapable. All humankind are members in one vast spiritual family black and white and red and yellow, and every hue and shade between. All are sons and daughters in the family of God. There's an old Hebrew parable about four brothers who decided to have a feast. But because wine was both scarce and expensive, they concluded that each one should bring a large jug of wine and upon arrival pour its contents into a larger vessel, which would be the serving jar for the meal. But one of the brothers secretly thought of a way in which he could avoid making his contribution. He decided to bring a jug of water instead of wine, thinking to himself that it wouldn't be noticed and the wine would look the same when it was all mixed together. So the guests assembled and the feast began, but when the wine was poured, it wasn't wine at all, it was all water. All four brothers had thought alike. All four had brought water. Authentic brotherhood is never content to let others do it. The greatest joys of existence lie in loving and serving, in the true satisfactions of giving. For thus does the love of God flow through the personalities of his children and into the lives of others. And human beings are infinitely loved, and that is a transforming truth. The poet Robert Frost could take a blank piece of paper and write a poem on it and sell it for $5,000. That we call genius. J. Paul Getty could take a check and sign his name to it, and it became worth a million dollars. That we call wealth. But the living God of this universe can take an ordinary human life and by the power of his spirit transform that individual into a radiant center of life and light and spiritual energy and purpose, and that we call love, which makes all things new and which can make individual human beings new as well. Spiritual things multiply by being used. I heard of a woman in Connecticut who had a beautiful flower garden in which she took great delight and from which it was her practice to give away large quantities of flowers. She kept a big basket fastened to the front gate of her house and every morning she would fill it with freshly cut flowers from which passers-by were invited to help themselves. Children walking to school, businessmen on their way to work, housewives going to market, all were invited to take a flower or two. And when she was asked if she were not worried that she would give away all of her flowers, she would reply, the more blossoms I cut, the more I have. This is a principle of the spiritual life. The more of faith, hope, and love that you share, the more will be yours. The more of truth and beauty and goodness that you bring into the lives of people, the more you will experience for yourself. This is the mystery of spiritual abundance. Freely you have received, freely give. 
Give and it will be given you. Good measure shaken together, pressed down and running over. The angels can put nothing into a clenched fist. You can be so obsessed with holding on to what you have that you will not dare to open your hands to receive the new gifts the Father would bestow. The Master asked, What father among you, if his child asked for a piece of bread, would in cruelty hand him a stone while the child stood bewildered and hungry? So much more will God give the good things of the Spirit to those who ask. But having received, then give. Bend a garden hose at the end, and no more water will flow into it, because no more water is flowing out of it. Receive the love and goodness of God, then freely give of love and goodness. Said the Master, he would be greatest among you, must be the servant of all. The more water you spray on your flowers and trees and your lawn, the more water flows into the hose. If you turn the nozzle back to a reduced outflow, you simultaneously create a reduced inflow. You are here on this earth to love and serve and give and delight in being a channel of God's truth and beauty and goodness. And one of the supreme moments of human existence comes when one discovers the reality of this ever-available, ever-flowing goodness of the universe. That this is a friendly solar system and a friendly galaxy and a friendly cosmos in which human beings live. It is the handiwork of a friend whose love is so great and whose goodness is so marvelous that to taste and see is to know that God is love, that God's purposes are good, and to enter joyously into the perfect plan is a source of endless adventure, challenge, and exhilarating progress. Be you therefore perfect, said the Master, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Someone may object that he or she does not intellectually understand all of the issues of philosophy and theology involving the living of a spiritual life. That is not essential. An atheist and a believer we're sitting next to each other at a restaurant counter having lunch. The atheist said, you're really religious, aren't you? The believer said, yes. He said he was. The doubter said, but I'll bet there are a good many things about religion that you don't understand, aren't there? The man of faith said, yes, there are some things I don't understand. The skeptic said, well, then what do you do with those things? The believer said, I do with them what I'm doing with the bones from this chicken I'm eating. He said, when I come to a piece of bone or gristle, I just lay it aside and go on enjoying the meat. And why some fool would insist on choking on the bones is utterly beyond my understanding. <laughs> to be certain, there are intellectual and philosophic questions which the most intellectually astute man or woman of faith will be unable to answer completely. But one should never permit those mysteries to inhibit one from tasting the joys and the nourishment of the spiritual life. There's too much to experience which is good and true and beautiful. God is infinite. The spirit is not bound to time and place. And as the master declared it, the kingdom of God is within you. A fragment of infinity indwells the mortal mind. With faith, no problem is impossible. Two candidates for the astronauts program are talking. One says to the other, we should forget about going to the moon. We've already gone to the moon. Now everybody's going to the moon. All we should do next is go directly to the sun. The other astronaut says, wait a minute, wait a minute. He says, we get within 13 million miles of the sun, we start to melt. The other one says, all right, we go at night. <laughs> no problem is impossible. My doctor just told me about a new diet. You can eat as much as you want of anything you don't like. No problem is impossible. <laughs> and no matter what happens, concentrate on the good. An elderly man goes to the doctor's office for an examination. The doctor completes the physical and says, sir, I'm happy to tell you, you'll probably live to be 90. The man says, but I am 90. <laughs> doctor says, what did I tell you? <laughs> In any situation, Seek for the best aspect. As it has long been observed, you have the choice of seeing your gas tank as half empty or half full. The choice of whether to view roses as having thorns or thorns as having roses. 
the choice of whether to see reality as a great backdrop of evil with only occasional occurrences of good, or conversely, to view the universe as a vast domain of goodness, against which the passing instances of evil are but momentary distortions of a larger plan expressing the ultimate good. To know that God is mighty in the power of God's love, and infinite in the resources of his spirit, is to know that through faith you can release a fountainhead of inexhaustible possibilities in life and day-by-day -day living. God created and intended people to live in love, peace, joy, enthusiasm, as children of God and as brothers and sisters to each other. And by the dynamics of living faith, it is possible to realize these potentials in a thrilling life of spiritual adventure, of which death will be but the twinkling of a transition to a higher realm of ongoing voyages into an exciting future, an explorational Star Trek from here to eternity. And hold ever to the faith that God has a use and purpose and calling for your life. In the year 1932, the violinist Fritz Kreisler was playing concerts in Dublin, Ireland. When on his way home from the auditorium one wintry evening as he was stepping into his car, he chanced to hear a fiddle being played. There on the streets, an Irish girl named Lillian Mack was playing for pennies from those who passed by. But Chrysler recognized something extraordinary in her touch on the instrument and sat listening from his car for several minutes. Then, beckoning her over, he invited her to his suite at his hotel to play for a group of other musicians. And a week later, he had signed this street violinist to a contract for a concert at the Royal Theater. Just as this musician found an artist in an unlikely place, so does God find his laborers in situations seemingly quite improbable. David was herding sheep. Simon Peter was fishing, Matthew was collecting taxes, Luther in a miner's cabin, John Bunyan at a blacksmith's forge, and Paul was going down the road to Damascus, busy at his task of persecuting believers in Jesus when he beheld the light. Wherever you may be, if there's an ounce of real sincerity and spiritual seeking in your soul, God can use it, beginning where you are, as you are, and can build on that spiritual sincerity and seeking and guide growth and strength until at last you come into your fullness as a worker for the new age dawning. God has a use for each and all of his children. And said the master, seek and you will find. Ask and you will receive. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Thank you. The preceding has been brought to you by Remote Transcription. And then write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviate it, SRI, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, all this literature, yours with no cost, charge, or obligation. For those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.